Good morning, Ralph Mayhew here, and I'm at Swell Sculpture Festival. It's down in Corumban, and they create these amazing sculptures once a year, and for uh, about a 10-day block, they put them on the beach, and we come down and take some photographs of them. So I thought this video, I'll give you a little bit of a virtual tour of the uh, some of the highlights some video of the um, of the sculptures and some photos so you could just see um, what they're like and maybe you could come down and check it out if that's your thing and then I'll do a, uh, a little bit of a, a tutorial not for very long but on how you take a photo of a sculpture which is um, a little bit more challenging than you'd think because well we'll get to that at the end hope you enjoy the virtual tour and I'll see you in a few minutes So I'd encourage you to come down to Swell, have a look at those things for yourself, enjoy them. And I'm now going to a sculpture that I've not been to at all before, I've not seen. Um, and a little bit of a, well, if I, if I were running Swell, I'd ask a couple of photographers to come down and orientate the sculptures. Because one of the, the challenges is you always have the wrong thing in the background, or it's not quite where you want it for the sun to rise so anyway for what it's worth might be a good idea for the future but have a look at this you know, these incredible sculptures I don't know how people do this these are more hens but there's like three in one you got the lifeguard tower just there the city in the background and the challenge that you have is finding the right angle to make it look interesting and actually capture what you feel the artist was intending so if you come from here you can see these beautiful there's the sun catches the purple and a bit of blue got some shadow underneath and here if i shoot from here i can get all three heads in because the heads are the feature i reckon but then i go oh how do i get the city in the background and maybe the life tower too so maybe that's about going somewhere like here so I'm gonna have a play with that and put it up what I come up with
you notice I was shooting pretty close then. I was shooting on 24 mil, and that even that close, I can get the whole sculpture in. And so I, you either have to commit, you want to put the whole sculpture in, or just an aspect of it where you zoom in and you focus in on it. The other challenge is the background. So in that case, I had to wait a while for the people to sort of move out of the way. People are fine in the, in the uh, background, but if they're not kind of posing or doing the things you want to do, it can be a distraction. So. What I try and do is, is wait till they're gone or hidden behind the sculpture. That works too. In terms of setting, I like to underexpose because this situation, the light in the sky as it starts to rain, gets so bright it blows everything out. So if you underexpose, you pick up the vibrancy of the color in the um, sculpture, if there is color in the sculpture, but you also capture the cloud formations and the city in the background, which I think um, just adds to the appeal of the image. It just draws you in and you get to enjoy it a little bit more. A couple of other important things to add is the light makes these um, sculptures really pop and come alive. And so you can wait for the light, whether it's the sun to rise or go behind the clouds um, and make it look entirely different. So you never underestimate the light. In fact, in photography, that's what you're doing. You're just using the light to achieve what you want to achieve. Because of the light, because you can see the background here, it's really, really white. But let's say I'm shooting my more hands just here. What, what you actually want to do is uh, what I, what, what's called bracketing. So you take an exposed, the correctly exposed image, and then you overexpose one and you underexpose one, which captures the shadows and the highlights. And then when you blend them together afterwards, you actually get to see the darkness and the lightness of the entire image. Your phone has HDR, which is um, a similar function. So if you put HDR on, on the little phone camera you have, um, it'll achieve that naturally, perhaps not to the extent of pro level, but you will really get to see the darkness and the lightness and it should balance it out. Also with ISO, um, I shoot 100. A few of a bit today I shot with a little bit higher because I bottomed out with my aperture at four um, and in some of the instances I, I needed the aperture that wide that I, um, I needed to bump up the ISO to balance out the light. But most of the shots I took today are bracketed so I took three or four shots at different exposures to capture the different uh, light options. I also use spot metering and spot metering means you can control the exposure exactly where your focus is and I find with sculptures that's the way to do it because your focus needs to be the light that's on the sculpture not your light across the board so you know, I use the spot metering you, you focus on whatever the subject is in the sculpture and then you can actually um, determine what the light is around that and uh, expose up or down to capture that different light in terms of settings, I am. Um, when we came down here, it was dark to start off with, and so I shoot with a tripod, and then you just expose for uh, if there's movement. Some of the sculptures, as you would have seen, have movement in them, and so you expose to capture some of the the movement, which looks really beautiful. I set my aperture to four or so if I want a specific part of it focused and everything else blurred, um, or if I want the background to kind of blur away. Some of the challenges you got these fences and some of the trees that do not add to the beauty of the uh, of the photo. If you're thinking, gosh, is it raining? Yeah, it's starting to pour. Have a look at this. Great. Just go like this and protect my lens. Oh, it's thumping down now. This is wonderful, I love vlogging in the rain. Anyway, um, and, and so I then set my aperture first and that detects the shutter speed as the light comes up you can shoot handheld you don't actually need to um, a tripod or anything like that and today I just came out with this so my 24 to 70 on my Nikon Z6 because um, previously I've realized I don't need any sharper than that and I don't need any wider than that because you can get really close to the sculptures and at the same time you don't need to go wide because you lose the impact of the sculptures. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something from it. Come down, bring your phone down, have a crack, see if you can put some um, amazing um, images up and then if you put them on Facebook or you put them on Insta just tag me and I'd love to see them and cheer you on it'd be sick now oh, I love our city look at that in the background thanks for watching everybody if you like this video please subscribe I hope it's been helpful I hope it's encouraged you to get out and about in the beautiful world that we live in and appreciate art and the beauty that it might bring to your life thanks very much give us a like 
all the YouTuberies, and I'll see you in a few seconds when you watch the next video. Bye.